In this video, I'm going to go over the Hermite and Laguerre polynomials. So the Hermite, Hermite and Laguerre, La, oops, Laguerre. And so I'm doing these both in the same video because uh, the the process of getting to them is is pretty much the same as what I've been doing in the past few videos. Uh, and so there isn't that much new as far as just uh, solving the differential equations for these and uh, getting sort of the, the formula and then the, the uh, particular cases of each of each polynomial in this series. Uh, but at the end of this video, I am going to sort of go through and sum up everything that we've been doing here. Uh, and so I'll start with Hermite, and uh, that is solving the second order ordinary differential equation that looks like uh, the second derivative with respect to x minus 2x dy dx plus 2 n y equals zero. And so we'll use our usual uh, Frobenius method looking for a solution that looks uh, that looks kind of like oops that looks kind of like this r equals zero to infinity of a r x r and we will end up getting a uh, coefficient recurrence relation uh, that will look like this a r or a sub r plus two is equal to uh, is equal to r plus one times r plus two uh, and in the numerator we have two r minus n uh, and then that is multiplied by a r so in terms of a r we can get the one that is two above that with this. And so what we end up getting is uh, is the solution to this is uh, usually written like this. Uh, H for Hermite is, is nice here since a lot of the other ones don't actually use the, the first letter of the name. Uh, and so that is the summation from R equals zero to one half n uh, and minus one to the r uh, r uh, factorial times n minus two r factorial n factorial and two x to the n minus two r and you will often see this also written in the uh, Rodriguez, uh, the Rodriguez formula, which is h n uh, of x is equal to minus one to the n times e to the x squared, uh, then d n uh, d x to the n, so the nth derivative uh, of e to the minus x squared. Uh, and I kind of like this formula because they they sort of uh, they sort of peel off these uh, derivatives of e to the minus x squared. And then they have this e to the x squared here that just sort of um, gets rid of that e to the minus x squared after you've peeled off uh, what you want from the derivatives of it. Uh, and so for instance, if you uh, wanted to solve for h1 where n equals 1 of x, uh, what you would get is the first derivative of e to the minus x squared. Um, I'll even put the uh, e to the x squared here first. Uh, and we get that derivative, which is just minus 2x. So minus 2x. Uh, and then this e to the minus x squared is the same as just 1 over e to the x squared. And so this 
uh, cancels out and our first uh, our first Hermite polynomial um, our first Hermite polynomial well this was negative 1 to the 1 so it's negative so this negative cancels out and we end up getting 2x and so I thought I think that's kind of clever how it's like it has this operator here just sort of taking what it wants from this e to the minus x squared uh, and then just kind of tossing that e to the minus x squared away using this e to the x squared. Um, and so we can look at the first few of these. So, uh, so these are sort of defined in different ways, but uh, what you notice here, so this is the first 11 of what they call the physicist's Hermite polynomials, uh, and you'll see that um, that up here these are all just uh, they are normalized so that there's no coefficient in front of the first x. Uh, over here we just have so h of h zero would be one, uh, so h one was that two x that I got, and if we did it for h two we'd get four x squared minus two so on and so forth. Uh, and so this is what those functions look like uh, are between minus 2 and 2. Uh, so for n equals 0, we get this red one here at 1, which is just a constant 1. Uh, the n equals 1, we get this uh, green one that kind of goes slanted, and n equals 2, we get more of this parabola, and so on and so forth. Um, and so one other thing to mention about these is just like all of, all of the polynomials and functions we've been working with, this is orthogonal, and this orthogonality uh, goes like this. And it's worth mentioning this here too because there is this extra thing here, e to the minus x squared, which I'll talk about in just a moment. It's called a weight function. Uh, and then h n of x times h m of x uh, d x and that equals uh, 2 to the n times n factorial over the square root of pi uh, times the Kronecker delta which um, just says that if n equals m then then, uh, then the Kronecker delta is not equal to zero, and if m does not equal m, then it is equal to zero, uh, which is just the the uh, orthogonality relationship. Uh, but so to talk about this weight function here, uh, so it's called a weight function. So weight, as in you know, like being heavier or lighter. Uh, and so if, you, if you've ever taken uh, statistics before, you might have heard of like a weighted average uh, where maybe you have some X uh, and some Y and you want to get the average of it, but you want to weight the X even more. You might put uh, some C1 uh, times that and some C2 times the Y. That's kind of what this is doing, but it's doing it uh, in, in, in an integral of these functions. Uh, and so I actually graphed that here. And so this is e to the minus x squared. And you see that this is uh, really, really small until we get to about minus 2. Then it bumps up and goes to 1 and then goes back down to uh, to almost zero at two, and essentially what's that? What that's doing is it's putting these Hermite polynomials to uh, to well practically zero uh, everywhere except here between negative two and two, where we are interested in it. So it's giving more weight to these functions within this region here between negative two and two. So this. Uh, this is what it looks like um, uh, graphed if you don't have that weight function there. But when we take the uh, when we take the orthogonality relationship, we put this weight function in it so that we are looking at essentially just 
what the functions look like between negative 2 and 2. So we are sort of waiting, uh, uh, waiting it uh, in that region uh, around the origin, sort of like we would wait some, some x here uh, compared to compared to this y, we would want to wait this function or this integral near the origin uh, compared to everywhere else. So anyway, that is what the um, the Hermite polynomials are. So now to the Laguerre polynomials. Uh, so for that, we have this second order ordinary differential equation again. Uh, that looks more like this, plus 1 minus x dy dx plus ny equals 0. Uh, if we got the initial equations, uh, so if we got the initial equations using that Frobenius method, uh, we would see that we get a double double root at s equals zero. Uh, and so our coefficient recurrence relationship would be a r plus one uh, is equal to a r times s plus r minus n over s plus r plus one squared. But we know that the s's are both uh, equal to 0. So this just becomes r minus n over, well, we still have that a r here, and then over r plus 1 squared. Uh, so this is how we get the, um, the coefficients in our, our uh, power series, or, or polynomial, if you will. Uh, and it'll become a polynomial if n equals a a positive integer, uh, which you can see here because r is is some uh, positive integer. And so if you set n equal to two, then once you got to uh, once you got to r equals two, then this will become zero, and that breaks off the power series, and it becomes a polynomial. Uh, and so the solution to this equation is uh, our function y is equal to, and uh, once again we got a nice uh, letter for our, our polynomials that is the first letter of the name of the polynomial, Laguerre. Um, and so that is equal to, uh, and once again if if you're, if this kind of looks like voodoo to you, uh, just kind of going from this and doing all this stuff, uh, I would uh, highly recommend checking out my video on the Frobenius method uh, because that is, uh, I'm pretty much just skipping to all the sort of uh, the important parts here in the solution. I'm skipping through all the Frobenius method process to uh, just get to what we are interested in. And so uh, then minus 1, oops, minus 1 to the r uh, times, and we have n minus r minus r factorial times r factorial squared, uh, and we have an n factorial up here, and then we have x to the r. And so this is the uh, the form of our, our Laguerre polynomials. And there is another generating function that looks like that looks like this. Uh, so e to the n uh, over n factorial. Uh, the nth derivative the nth derivative of x to the n, uh, then e to the minus x. So that is uh, just another uh, generating function for 
the um, Laguerre polynomials. And once again, just like before, this is, these are are um, these are orthogonal polynomials. Uh, so we have this, and then we have another weight function here, another weighting function, uh, ln of x times lm of x dx, uh, and this will equal the Kronecker delta of nm. And so, uh, if so, one if n equals m, zero if n does not equal m. Um, and so then we also have, uh, and these are the ones that um, that will be important to us in quantum mechanics are the associated, so the associated Laguerre, Laguerre uh, polynomials, poly Nomials. And uh, well, these end up looking like um, so we have L, N, uh, and then K up here of X equals minus 1 K uh, times the kth, the kth derivative, kth derivative of our our regular uh, Laguerre polynomial uh, at n, or the regular n plus kth uh, Laguerre polynomial. And so this is uh, the version that will be used uh, when we start doing, we start using this in quantum mechanics. Uh, and one other thing to point out before I get to the more uh, intuition stuff is that we can relate the Hermite polynomial, so the even Hermite polynomials, uh, is equal to minus 1 to the n, 2 to the 2n, n factorial, uh, and then the Laguerre, pol uh, the associated Laguerre polynomial, minus 1 half of x squared. Uh, and then we also can do the odd Hermite polynomials, uh, and that is equal to minus 1 to the n, 2, 2n, two plus 1, n factorial. Then we have an x thrown in here, uh, and then l, n, and then positive 1 half uh, x squared. And so this relation is interesting because uh, because it relates the harmonic oscillator, uh, so uh, so relates relates harmonic oscillator, which uh, where, which is where we will find the Hermite polynomials uh, to uh, the hydrogen the hydrogen atom. Uh, where the solutions, uh, that should be a O atom, where the uh, Laguerre, uh, the associated Laguerre polynomials will show up in uh, solutions to the Schrodinger equation for the hydrogen atom. Uh, so this is kind of uh, the, the take home message from this is just that the uh, harmonic oscillator, which is just sort of the, the one dimensional uh, the one-dimensional thing like this, where uh, this is our potential well, is related to the uh, hydrogen atom, which uh, is some positive uh, proton here in the middle, uh, and then the the potential is increasing as you go away from the proton in any direction, just like in one dimension. If you go in any direction from this point here, the potential will increase. Uh, and so that is kind of uh, just showing that there is this sort of uh, relationship between the harmonic oscillator and the hydrogen atom. 
And so we can look at uh, this is the first few Laguerre polynomials. The the um, Wikipedia doesn't have a list like this uh, for the associated Laguerre polynomials, but they're actually uh, very similar to this. In fact, uh, let me look at my uh, my Griffiths uh, quantum mechanics book here, because it has a list of yeah. So the associated ones, uh, the associated ones are the same uh, for. So if we go back to our our uh, associated, if k is equal to zero, then the associated Laguerre polynomials uh, are the same as the regular Laguerre polynomials, which makes sense because we'd be taking the zeroth derivative of ln plus zero. So if that makes sense, that that would be the same. Uh, so it only gets a little bit different uh, if we change that. And so uh, what I have here in my Griffiths textbook is that if we have if we have uh, L and K is 2 and 0, then it's still equal to 1. Uh, if we have L, 2, and 1, uh, and these are functions of X, then that is actually equal to minus X plus 3. Uh, rather than uh, minus x plus two, and so they're they're quite similar to uh, to these regular Laguerre polynomials here, uh, and this is the the graph of the Laguerre polynomials for different values of n here. Uh, okay, so uh, so what I wanted to show. Uh, as kind of a, a summing up of everything we've gone over now. So this is uh, a little table that I made here in Word. Uh, and so th we can think of the unit circle and these uh, trigonometric functions as circular harmonics. And so we can see how uh, going counterclockwise around this circle uh, corresponds to different positions on this uh, this wavelength here. Uh, and so the spherical harmonics is very similar to the circular harmonics in that sense, but now we're doing it on the surface of a sphere instead of on a one uh, a one dimensional line. Uh, and so you can kind of think of this spherical harmonic right here, this y uh, l m. Uh, as being sort of like the spherical version of the sine and cosine functions. Uh, and of course, the spherical harmonic is uh, using the, the, um, the associated Legendre functions. Uh, and so that gives us this sort of, um, this periodic function over the surface of a sphere, where you could maybe think of where it's blue here as being more positive and red here being more negative. Uh, and so you could almost sort of uh, uh, make like a, a, a sinusoidal wave going over every, uh, every point, well, every line over this surface, really. And then the Hermite polynomials uh, is for the harmonic oscillator, which uh, once again looks kind of like this. Uh, and uh, this is for solving the one-dimensional Schrodinger equation for the for a potential well that looks like this uh, this sort of parabola here, and we will get into that uh, in in the quantum mechanics videos uh, very soon uh, as a, as I'm recording this. And we remember the spherical Bessel functions. Uh, so this is the uh, this is the spherical Bessel function. And so now uh, I said over here that this is looking at at the surface of the sphere. So this is now looking at as we as uh, as we take the uh, radius of the sphere, I guess, as the the function. And so we can look at this like uh, a sphere where it's zero potential inside and then infinite potential outside. And so that's what the spherical Bessel functions are used for uh, in quantum mechanics is 
modeling uh, a system as a, a an infinite spherical well. And then these Laguerre, uh, these Le associated Laguerre polynomials, which will show up when we're talking about a hydrogen atom. Uh, so this even says a 1s orbital imagined as an onion. And you can think of these alternating sort of uh, purple and green colors here as being uh, positive and negative on a wave similar to this, so the positive part here and the negative part right here. Uh, and so the radial part, so once again, the uh, this Laguerre polynomial is for the radial part, not for what the surface at one of these layers looks like, but for the function uh, on the radial, uh, the radial component here. Uh, and so if you took this R right here and then looked at that as just a, a sort of single line, you would get something uh, that looks kind of like this. Uh, this is the Bessel function, uh, but the Laguerre one, uh, as you can see, is, is similar. But you can see that we get this uh, alternating function going from positive to negative to positive to negative uh, on our, uh, as we kind of move through the uh, layers of our onion here. And so that is kind of what all of these different functions mean. Uh, and I hope that this table helps kind of bring that together. Uh, so I also have down here, this is the, uh, the wave function for a hydrogen atom. Uh, and you can see here we got this L uh, with, with the 2L plus 1, the N minus L minus 1 uh, here as our uh, Laguerre polynomials. And then this YLM here is our spherical harmonics. Uh, and then it has all this other stuff here. And uh, when, uh, when I go through the actual quantum mechanics, I'll talk a little bit more about all that stuff. But this is kind of what all of this is sort of building up to. Uh, and so anyway, I hope you found this video to be, um, to be helpful. And uh, this will probably be my last one unless I think of other things. But I don't have any more planned for this uh, differential equations uh, series here, uh, looking at these special functions, because uh, like the Chebyshev uh, polynomials, the Chebyshev function, and things like that, I don't know if I'm going to uh, go through any of those, but who knows? We'll, we'll see. I'm not going to say never, but anyway, um, yeah, so I think I will leave it at that. I will, uh, I hope you found these videos, uh, interesting, if not at least informative, and, uh, I will see you in another video.